Howdy y'all, got the Bulldog on the channel. I tried to do a video, a, sh uh, a YouTube short the other day, and halfway through the video, my phone hooked to the Bluetooth earbuds that I had in my pocket, and the audio went to crap. So, instead of making a short out of it, I'll just make a whole video of Torque to Yield. Got this Cadillac with a 3.6 in it, and we did one head. This head had been done right before the customer got it, and he had chains break, and this head got wiped out. Anyway, here's how I do torque to yield bolts. Now, I've got my information wrote down on a piece of paper. I do it this way so we don't print stuff out, and I just wad this up, pitch it. But uh, I just print, write down the information I need. The eight millimeter bolt goes to 11 foot pounds and then 75 degrees. The 11 millimeter bolts go to 22 foot pounds and then 150 degrees. And that's kind of important to keep track of all this stuff and I'll show you why. Of course, we've got our new bolts here because with torque to yield bolts, you cannot reuse them. This one here has oddball bolt in the back. One head has two, I think, and this one has just one, but you know, we got two of them on this kit. Here's our new bolts. Now the purpose of torque to yield, you see how long this bolt is. You have aluminum and it, it expands quite a bit more than iron does. It's, it's more elastic. And in order to keep that head gasket tight at all times, what they do, of course we got longer threads, but you torque this down and then you turn it an amount and that stretches the bolt out because this is a steel bolt, it's very elastic. And it basically acts like a spring to hold the head down onto the engine. So heating, expansion and cooling, this will just sit there and stretch. Uh, that's why it's so important to reuse, to not ever reuse head bolts anymore because once it's stretched, it's stretched. You don't do it again. They used to have gauges to measure this, make sure that it's flat. If it's not flat, it's stretched. If it is flat, you can reuse it, but don't take the chance. Just get new bolts. Now, all these bolts are the same length. Uh, you install them dry. There's been debate on whether to put never seize on them or put oil on them. You used to put oil on bolts so you get an even torque. They figured out, don't do that anymore. Install them dry. Before I put the head on, I blew the holes out, made sure I didn't have any foreign debris or liquid inside the holes that'll cause them to hydro lock. That'll make you a bad day. These are all the same length. So we don't have to worry about which one goes where? Our procedure on this head is to put all the 11 millimeter bolts in, torque them down, and then take care of the eight millimeter bolt. I'm going to drop it in the hole just to have it there. Now we'll run these down get them snug, not tight, snug. Now this one's pretty simple. We torque it to 22 foot pounds. There's no additional steps. The last one I did on that 3.6 Pinstar was a nine step process to torque the heads. That's where what I'm about to show you is a whole lot more critical. But this one's, you know, it's the same premise. Got it set to 22 foot pounds. Now you tighten them in a crisscross pattern from inside to outside.
run them again for good measure. And that one moved a long way. All right, that's slowing down now. All right. Now we're gonna use a torque angle gauge. They have a deal for the torque wrench that does this for you. I don't have the bigger one yet. I have the smaller one. So when I'm doing heads, I have to use this. This is old school, very old technology. It's a little bit more difficult to use, but you know, the batteries never die in this one. You get ready. Set your torque angle gauge on your socket and find a place to anchor it. Get some place that's not going to try to twist around on you. Where you get a nice even torque. This one's going to be 150 degrees. So I'll put it on zero. 150 degrees is one right here, one mark lower than 160. It's preferable to go in one motion, but this is a long ways. Don't know that I can do that. This is where the snap-on torque wrench really comes in handy because you can ratchet it and it will keep track of your angle. That's why I bought that other one. Now, we have it set up. Rotate our mark up to zero. I can see it. Now we'll torque it till it gets to 150, which is right there. Like I said, preferably in one motion. Right there. Now, first thing you do when you get this torque to your angle, you take a Sharpie and you put a mark on the head to tell you you've done this one because if you lose track, you're screwed. You don't know what the torque is. If it's just a regular torque, then you can double check it with your torque wrench. But when you've done this and you miss one, yeah, you're, you're gonna have a bad day. This is why you take a Sharpie, have it here ready, and you put a mark near the bolt that you've just done. Some people wanna put a mark on the head of the bolt I just put it on the uh, land of the valve cover. It's shiny right there. It's, you can see it real easy. Put a mark there. You never know when somebody's gonna come in the door, when the phone's gonna ring, anything like that that'll disturb you in the middle of what you're doing. You could get, could get a notification on your YouTube channel and it'll distract you. But put a mark there. Don't rely on your memory as to which one you did. Now we'll move on to the next one.
we're gonna continue and do all the rest of these in a crisscross pattern, putting a mark after I get each one of them done. Okay, now, whenever you're gonna do a second round of torque to yield, because some of them have two rounds, you would go along, each one of these has a mark on it, and I just go along, and after I torque my second one, I mark an X through it. And you go to your next one, and you torque it, and you mark an X through it, and continue. Now that other one, like I said, it was a nine step process. You did all this, then you loosened them up because you've got a good set on the gasket now and then you retorqued them. They don't bother telling you exactly why you're having to do some of the things you do, but you have to do it their way or else you have problems. They won't bother to tell you that they're wanting to set the gasket or pre-stretch the bolts because they're operating on a different set of equations and don't bother telling you why because you don't deserve to know or whatever but the initial torque they tell you is not the correct one and the second torque they tell you is the correct one but if you do that the first time it won't end up in the torque range they want it i don't know I, i'm not an engineer all i do is fix their problems they create we're going to torque this rear bolt it's 11 foot pounds plus 75 degrees. Uh, this should be able to uh, take the torque, 75 degrees. Keep an eye on it unless something happens. Thirty-five, forty, forty-five, fifty, fifty-five. 45, 50, 55. Now I gotta ratchet. 60, 55, 70, 75 degrees. This is where these things come in really handy because back in this corner, you saw me on the time lapse having to readjust the breaker bar because I don't have the big long ratchet with me right now, but you're not supposed to have to do that. You've got this hood strut in the way it's almost like when they build these engines, they build them outside the car. Uh, you don't have the stroke to keep track of all that stuff. I hope this helps you guys out uh, how to do torque to yield stuff. It's not really that complicated, it's tedious. And if you get disturbed in the middle of it, if you're not taking precautions, you will lose your place and you will make big mistakes. So avoid that by just documenting as you go along. Don't, don't rely on your memory. A good mechanic just gets the job done right. It doesn't really matter how you get there. Like, comment, subscribe, hit your little bell notification, share it all around. We'll talk to you later.